The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Monday, October 20th, 2020, Season 16, Episode number 47. Welcome to another edition of The Break. We are live here from the SWBC Morgan Studios at the Star. And if you can't tell my, by my voice, there is a, a lot of stuff that uh, we got to talk about because it didn't look really good yesterday. Cowboys get a loss uh, at home to the Arizona Cardinals. They lose 38-10. to 10. And, uh, and like I said, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to, to take in from that game. We're going to go through some different things. Uh, I, what I basically did in order for us to kind of talk about this game is I'm going to run through some storylines. Um, and we'll dive into each of them and, and talk a little bit about each of them. And some of them are a little bigger picture. Some of them are just kind of what happened in the game. But I think the game, if you're going to dissect that game, I think you have to start with the offensive line because I think that, in my opinion, uh, was one of the biggest areas where the Cowboys found deficiencies, and I think it affected a lot of other things. The first thing that happens to them, though, Zach Martin goes out. Nick, what do we know about Zach Martin's injury and 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 the status of him going forward? I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Jerry got a chance to do an interview this morning. Uh, he wasn't asked about it, so I don't. We don't know. I mean, it's concussion. Concussion protocol. Short week doesn't look good. Rushing him back like that because you would think on a short week like that. Um, you know, he's he's probably. I, I don't know. I don't know if he'll be ready or not. But I would I would imagine probably not. Dave, uh, the uh, Cowboys had to play Connor McGovern when he went down, in 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 the place of Zach Martin. Uh, what did you see from Connor McGovern? Uh, at just I guess throughout the game, how would you assess his play? I mean, I hate to throw out blanket statements from only watching it once. I obviously haven't had a chance to look at look at it again or watch the tape, but I thought he played fine. I, you know, for a guy that that really got his first real NFL action last night on short notice when Zach went out, um, you know, I don't think he was the reason that the offensive line couldn't hold up. Let's put it that way. Um, Zach, the Zach status is it's going to be one of those day by day things. I think no two concussions are the same. I lean toward, uh, like I agree with Nick, I lean toward thinking he's probably not going to be available on, on a short week, but that's going to be one of those things where you're going to need to check in on that every day. And uh, if Connor has to play again, welcome to the big leagues, buddy, because that Washington front is full of first-round picks. So he might have held up pretty well on, on Monday, but that isn't necessarily an indicator when the talent level rises when you play Washington. Amber, this team yesterday, they had a hard time running the ball, although there were some moments in the game where they had a couple good runs. They really had a hard time protecting. And at this point, they're running with only one starter from last year, that being Connor Williams, who most people, probably everybody, would say was the weakest link of that group last year. That all being considered, how would you assess the offensive line's play yesterday? Well, I, I went back and watched a couple, a few plays. Uh, honestly, it's just those two edges, those two tackle positions. It's either Brandon Knight or Steele. That's like his guy would always be a little, a few seconds behind uh, Brandon Knight's guy. So they're very, very close to each other. Uh, I did watch a few of Connor McGovern. Honestly, most of the plays where I saw the the. Uh, protection being pretty pretty bad was when uh, either tackle was doing something bad. Like I, I didn't see something major from Connor McGovern, uh, Tyler Biedish, He I think he's doing a good job. There are a couple of misses there, but that's gonna happen. Connor is still hanging in there doing whatever he can. I did see a couple of plays where they did utilize Ezekiel Elliott uh, to help protect, and when he did that, the pocket did look a lot better, and he gave uh, Andy Dalton somewhat a little bit more time. So. In a scenario, even though you want Zeke to be able to run the ball in scenarios where, you know, he's not necessarily uh, having a great game, instead of benching him, I think I would rather use him 
to protect and help give Andy Dalton a better protection there, but it doesn't doesn't look good. It does not look good at all so far. Yeah, looking at it, Nick, and when you go down that whole offensive line, what was your assessment of the of the line as a unit? I they're one of ten. I mean, to me, I mean, okay. Sorry, I thought we were gonna have a general statement on this game, but as the offensive line, they were bad, and they were they tied with ten other position groups uh, out there as well. I, I, I mean, you got to give, you got. I mean, this is the second team offensive line with Connor Williams, who many people thought for the first game should go to the second team. So this is just a full line of backups with a backup quarterback and a backup tight end. I mean, it is what it is. You're not gonna win a lot of games on that. You know, doing playing that way. I mean, so there's no excuses to really to to play that poorly. But you you have to expect that it's going to look really bad when you have all those backups. You know, that's an interesting point because I I I wonder, and it didn't seem like to me last week as we were breaking down this game and as we were getting ready for it and as we were making our picks, it didn't feel to me like any of us were as concerned mm-hmm. about the offensive line as maybe we should have been. And I go back to Bucky Brooks and what he said earlier in the week when we had him on, and he talked about the fact that Andy Dalton in his past has been really good when you can protect him. When you can't protect him, he's not very good. And yesterday it seemed like that's the way that it played out. But I don't think – I didn't get the impression, and I'll speak for myself, I didn't expect it to be that bad. Dave, did you expect it to be that bad? And did you expect that going into the game? I don't want to quibble, but I'm pretty sure I talked about being terrified about how much the Cardinals were going to blitz. And I read this morning they blitzed on about 40% of their snaps. Dalton was getting rocked by safeties, linebackers. Obviously, the front four got home as well. But, I mean, yeah, I I wasn't surprised by anything that I saw, and especially when Zach went out of the game. Um, I was fairly confident that they were going to dial up ways to pressure him. And, like, I, like, not to be a jerk, but I'm pretty sure I said that at times last week as well. Well, that all being said, are you surprised that the Cowboys coaches didn't expect that and decided that in a lot of instances they opted to go with an empty backfield and they had the tight end split out wide? I mean, they were really giving no help to try to help these these tackles particularly. Can I, can I be real? Because you brought this up to me in the press box last yeah. night. Um, and I think you have a point, obvious. I mean, you know, you want to give those guys as much help as possible. And I want to be careful because, again – I don't even think the All-22 for this game is available yet. If it is, I certainly haven't watched it. I think I got four hours of sleep last night. Um, I thought a bigger problem than that was Andy Dalton just held on to the ball for far, far too long. Uh, Maybe that's because his throwing lanes were clogged by blitzers. Maybe that's because guys couldn't get open. But I counted what felt like half a dozen to ten snaps where he had three, three and a half, four seconds of protection and didn't know where to go with the ball. Uh, you know, I know you put you put in your rundown that he carried twice for four yards, I think. Mm-hmm. Those were both plays. They weren't designed runs. Those were plays where he stood there and had to pull it down and go somewhere. And we've seen – it's been a hell of an impressive month for these Cowboys receivers, you know, when Dak was in the lineup. So I'm – hesitant to say that they just couldn't get open against this defense. I just don't know how well Andy Dalton was seeing the field. But again, I, I want to go back and watch because I don't know that for sure. But that's what it looked like to me. Uh, Andy Dalton had, uh, he was 34-54 uh, with, with 63% completion percentage, 266 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. Um, Amber, how did you assess this play overall? Bad. Really bad. I and it sucks because I honestly had very good hopes about Andy Dalton and, and yes as, uh, part of it has to deal with the offensive line but at the same time either he was holding on to the ball too long or in the place where he was getting rid of the ball quickly it was like they didn't even look like passes they looked like he would just quickly toss it and they wouldn't be any good so it just looked like an inexperienced quarterback and I know he has a ton of experience and that's one of the main reasons we kept talking about him last week in the fact that this is probably the best uh, backup quarterback that the Cowboys could have had but at the same time watching that game to me he did not look like an experienced quarterback there were things that I expected him to do a lot better as far as instinct yes He's not going to be necessarily the quarterback like Dak is as far as getting out of the, of the pocket and running and making, just having better instincts. You know, uh, he, I, 
I, I don't know what to tell you. I really thought he would do better, and I'm a lot, very disappointed, and I'm not very excited as what is to come next because at the beginning of the game that was the main thing i was excited to see this game was like okay let's see what andy dalton can do i'm ready for this two series in i was so bored and i was ready to just call it a quits and but we kept hung, hanging on and i kept thinking okay maybe the second half but wait we don't have Dan prescott and I doubt it, and yeah, they, it did not work out, and he was not able to carry the team in the second half of the game like that. Dak did. Nick, how much do you attribute the poor offensive play to Dak not being there? Because there is this kind of de- competing thought process out there. Some say, well, Andy didn't have time. Mm-hmm. But you, in, in a lot of instances, I mean, like uh, I wouldn't say a lot of instances, but in, in this instance particularly, there are most of those guys that were out there yesterday, Dak's been playing with most of those guys most yeah. of the season and has gotten the offense to at least be more productive from the standpoint of points. How much do you put on Dak not being there? Yeah, I mean, do you think Dak's a, a bus driver quarterback? No. Do you think Andy Dalton is? Yes. Yeah, me too. And and I think that's that's what it comes down to. Like, Dak Dak doesn't drive the bus. I mean, you know, all the. I mean, he he drives a better car than that, and he'll drive a lot more if he can get this deal done. But if if Andy Dalton is a bus driver, and when the wheels aren't working, and the you know kids are mess, you know, yelling in the back and all that stuff, it's going to be a hectic day. And it was. You got to help Andy Dalton. They didn't. His running back didn't help him at all. His running back. When I said, and I know I tweeted this, when I said he was going to ball out, I didn't mean that the fumble <laughs> would come out. I thought he was going to play inspired. He did not. He did not. That was the most disappointing part. Yeah. The best part about Zeke's day was ste- stepping up to the podium and admitting it. And, and you know, But that's all nice and good. Is he? You know, but Michael Gallup's not catching a touchdown pass. I mean, he didn't get help, and Andy Dalton needs help. He's a, he's a guy that has always needed help in an offensive line that can block for him and all that stuff. I don't think he was terrible. He, I thought he would have played a little bit better than that, but I don't think he was terrible. I just think he's got it's got to be a perfect situation for him, and it certainly wasn't, you know. So, uh, but yeah, they missed Dak. They missed Dak because Dak has the dog in him, and that and no, who else has it? It's not the defensive guys. They don't they don't have it. So Zeke didn't have it. I thought he did. He would. I thought he would, and he didn't. So who has it? And the receivers don't really have you know play like that. They don't have that fire. Dak gives them that fire, and they missed it. You know, and I think Dak gives them even more than that. I think what Dak gives them is the threat that he can run the ball. And I, mm-hmm. I saw a couple times yesterday, probably more than a couple times, uh, situations where the Cowboys basically blocked it up pretty decent. But there was this huge hole, that gaping hole that developed in the middle of the offensive line. And basically you had all the Cardinals defenders back playing man coverage. And in that situation, most of the time, when you got a quarterback that can run, he says, I'm pulling the ball down and I'm going to pick up 10 yards, 12 yards, 15 yards, whatever. Did you see that last and, night by any quarterback? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did see that by one quarterback. But my point is, like, teams don't have to worry about it. And that's what really I think – worries me the most about the Cowboys going forward is they're probably teams are looking at this and saying we don't have to worry about Andy Dalton running and if we don't have to worry about Andy Dalton running we can cover these guys on the back end and especially if we can get pass rush with four guys which again the Cardinals did a lot yesterday especially in the second half they were doing with four guys they weren't blitzing a lot in the second half in my opinion it looked like they were sending four a lot and and that being said you look at this the way that they played and and I look at it and I'm thinking that's going to be a problem for the Cowboys. And it's not like you're going to all of a sudden teach Andy Dalton how to become a runner. Um, and so I don't know how the Cowboys get themselves out of that hole unless their offensive line plays better. Dave, I'll ask you this question. I think I know your answer, but there's a narrative out there that, that Dak got a lot of the yards and the points that he got this season uh, in the second half when they were down bigs because, big because teams played soft and, and that's how he kind of racked all that up. Yesterday, they had a similar scenario, but they weren't able to pick up those yards and points. Do you think it kills that narrative about Dak and make, makes Dak look even more impressive with the things he was able to do in the first five games of the season? I mean, nothing Dak does is going to convince a certain segment of people until he wins the Super Bowl. But yeah, I mean, I made a 
I made a really snide comment about it. I mean, nobody, you know, somebody forgot to remind Andy Dalton that it's easy to play once you go down by a lot. Like, yeah. it's easy to do that. It's easy to throw your team out of a hole because Dak does it all the time. That's just garbage time. But Cardinals were kicking their ass last night and nothing looked easy for them. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I thought that narrative was stupid to begin with. I certainly think it's stupid as we sit here today. All right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, I want to talk about Zeke and his fumbles. I want to talk about this defense and how they performed. And I want to ask you guys the question, how much blame goes to this coaching staff? Because we're now through six games, and what we're seeing, as the coach himself has said, at this point, it is a, it is a pattern. It is a pattern. What we're seeing is a pattern. So we'll talk about that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of mine. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. It's funny. As we travel places, often we find the places we want to travel aren't really places at all. They're people. They're grandparents, moms, old friends, and new nephews. That's why at American Airlines, we've been using enhanced cleaning measures so you can feel confident every step until you get to them. So as always, our people can't wait to take you to yours. American Airlines, you are why we fly. To the break. Don't miss your chance to get tickets to see the Cowboys at AT AT&T Stadium this season. It'll get better than that, what we saw Monday night, I would imagine. Uh, Home matchups against the Steelers, Washington, 49ers, and Eagles. A limited number of tickets are on sale now. Get yours today at DallasCowboys.com slash tickets. Yes, it will be better. Nick said it's going to get better, and then he led that with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They ain't going to beat them by 28. <laughs> I can promise uh, okay, you that. Okay, look, I promise you the Steelers. Uh, maybe won't those win other, by maybe those other three teams. The Steelers look really, really. No, good. They, they do, and they'll they be at home really good. because they'll be way more yellow towels than anything the Cowboys will throw and out. And their there. defense right now we is playing it. is like really, really playing well. So. Uh, yeah, I, they ain't gonna beat them at twenty-eight. What I'm saying is thirty-eight to ten. Okay, we'll yeah. see. I don't think so. See, that's, but that's, maybe thirty-five. Maybe maybe forty-two. <laughs> I mean, sure. That that was just a that was that was a really bad bad game. Yeah. Against the, you know, I mean, a, a maybe above average team, but probably average when they when they finish with their division, mm-hmm. they'll be an average team, yeah. which makes it even worse. Exactly, that's which the problem. Yeah. Lead it into your coaching problem. All question. right. Well, I was going to go to Zeke, but you're right. Let's let's jump to the coaching issue because there. It, let me. Let, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how I even bring this. Like, I look at this this team, and there are a number of players on this team that it seems like to me. The coaching staff is just for whatever reason like just hell bent that these guys are gonna be players. And and it takes like them seeing over and over and over and over again that they aren't very good before they will actually say, okay, maybe we ought to back off a little bit. We saw it with Darian Thompson earlier this season. We saw it with Steele earlier this season. We saw it last night with with uh, with Daryl Worley. Yeah. And he's been bad for a while. And you got Anthony Brown sitting over there on the sideline. And again, I'm not saying, trying to say in any way that Anthony Brown is like the answer to all of this. What I'm saying is, I think he's a better player than Daryl Worley. 
And I'm and I'm sitting there and I'm wondering like why is it that they get themselves in these situations where they just so are so hell bent on the fact that they think one guy is so much better or should be out there when there are other guys that I think are on the sideline that that are better than they are. Nick, what do you think? I don't I don't necessarily agree with you there because I don't think that I don't think the options are way better. Now, the Worley over Anthony Brown I don't understand uh-huh. really because Anthony Brown seems like a better player. They're paying right. him to be a better player. He's made more plays uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, so I, I just think that he I don't understand that, that one. But like Darian Thompson and for Diamond Wilson and I think Donovan Wilson is playing better than Darian Thompson was playing early in the season. I think it's clearly better, in my opinion. Maybe it, it's not a huge difference maybe, yeah. overall from the defense standpoint, uh, I, but I think he's playing better. I just think that there's just not a lot of options here. I mean, why are they playing Steele? Because they don't want to play Cam Irving, or they don't want to play you know, McGovern there and slide someone else out. I mean, they... It's just I don't think there's a ton of other options. I think it's just you got a you got a bunch of C players and it's C plus or C minus depending on the day in the matchup. Dave, what do you think? Dave, Amber, what do you think? Hey, everybody! <laughs> did not hear us. Did Sorry. You, did, did you? Oh, wait, did you no, catch all that? I got. I got. I got booted off by WebEx. I st- I didn't hear anything after Derek's oh, question sorry. about Daryl Worley. Sorry. We, we were talking about the coaching stuff, and I'll actually go to Amber, but we were talking about the coaching stuff, and, and my point was I think there have been a number of instances this year where it looked like to me they've gone with the lesser player. Now, again, Nick, I, I agree with Nick's point to some degree that the lesser player may be going from a – I'll give it a B- minus to a C- minus, uh, or a C+. Plus to a D, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the point is, I think there were guys that were out of the game who were better players, and I pointed out the Worley and, and Anthony Brown sitting on the sideline last night, and I pointed out Darian Thompson and Donovan Wilson, and I, you know, I, I just think there have been situations where the Cowboys seem like they aren't necessarily always putting the best guy out there. Amber, yeah. do you agree with that? You get okay. I'll go. <laughs> Dave was getting ready for his answer. Um, I was just gonna. I would say at this point, week C- six, I'm ready to blame it all on the coaches because yes, there are certain players that don't necessarily have the talent that you want them to have. So at this point, I'm looking at okay, what are some of those players that we know and we've seen play good football you know you can go back to Leighton Vanderish that we finally saw him back on the field doing some things we can go back to Jalen Smith and what he's been able to do in the past Demarcus Lawrence Aldon Smith which is you know the better guy in there out of the bunch but still when you look at these players that you know have had a talented or a pretty good run in the past but then are not necessarily performing at the level that you expect them or want them to be this year, then I go back to think, okay, well, then it's on coaching because at this point, what, you're not seeing any kind of changes. You're all, every week, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. I will give them credit, though. The beginning of the game this past week, um, this past game against the Cardinals, yes, the defense played better, but... I need to watch the game again because I don't I don't know if it was just the Cardinals offense not playing as good or if it was really the Cowboys defense doing most of the job that they needed to do. So I, I'm kind of hesitant to give them too much credit in that aspect. But at this point, uh, I'm ready to blame it on the coaching staff. And I don't know in the middle of the season what kind of changes you actually are able to make at this point. Dave, how much of the blame do you put on the coaching staff? Well, to be blunt with you, like the stats don't really bear out what you're saying, Derek. Uh, Anthony Brown played 80% of the snaps, and Jordan Lewis and Trayvon Diggs played more than 90. Like those were their three. Uh, Daryl Worley played, I think, 21 snaps, which is just so over why, 30%. So why was like, Worley on the field at all? Like what was the point in putting him on the field? Be, because You've seen him we, get beat a number of times. They do not have four DBs that can do the job adequately. That that would be my guess. And I blame my the blame that I put on the coaches is that guys get beat in the NFL all the time. Like it it just is the nature of the league. And like we've watched a lot of bad defense over the last decade here in Dallas. But the staggering number of busts that we have seen from this Cowboys defense is 
beyond appalling. Um, I think they've given up seven touchdowns of 30 yards or more, and it would be eight if not for Diggs's forced fumble on DK Metcalf. They've given up three of 50 yards or more in the last three games. And I don't care. Daryl Worley might be awful. Uh, he's still an NFL player, and NFL players aren't supposed to be beaten that embarrassingly bad. And it says to me that the, like, the scheme is either too complicated or somebody's doing a terrible job of teaching them how to execute it. Because even executing poorly does not look that bad in the NFL. Like, I mean, they are tied for the fourth most points allowed through six weeks. And the three teams that are worse all played in the 50s. That is the level of ineptitude. So again, like it doesn't, I don't even care that the guys aren't very good players because even bad players don't get beaten that bad. So something is wrong with this scheme, whether getting the players to buy into it or teaching it to them correctly, something is way the hell off. And whatever they need to do, boil it down, pare it down to like three coverages that everybody can run, I don't care. But they got to make some type of adjustment. And that's that's what I care about more than, like, I mean, yeah, Daryl Worley's not good. But listen, and I promise you, like, I watched Reggie Robinson in training camp. I'm not convinced he could do it a whole lot better. I just don't think they have very good DBs. But even bad DBs shouldn't look like this. Well, I'll throw out a couple things for you. First of all, I think what you're looking at when you look at those statistics and those numbers you threw out, Daryl Worley... I think he played a lot less after he busted. He started the game. He was playing cornerback a lot before that. And then after he busted, they pulled him. So I don't know that the percentages necessarily would have changed if he would have not had that bust. But even at that, I don't know if you've seen this video. There's a video out on, on Twitter right now. I think it's Darius Butler, the former defensive back, used to play for the Patriots. Uh, he does this little thing. Yeah. And, and on that video, he breaks down that, that particular play. And this is not some kind of complex scheme. Basically, he had... Third, they were playing uh, cover three on the back end. He had a deep third. He basically bit on a route that he didn't need to bite on. He had a guy underneath, and he just basically stopped moving his feet. I don't think that's on the coaches. I think that is just a player that just made a boneheaded decision. He didn't play good technique. I mean, if you're if you're playing deep thirds, you don't let anybody get behind you. And by the way, there was already another guy in the middle of the field that was threatening that was already behind him. So, again, he just wasn't doing his job properly. I don't think that's on the coaches necessarily. I think that's about him not doing his job. And that's why I'm talking about Daryl Worley specifically. I don't think he's played very well this season. So, Darryl, I, oh. but I was going to say, whether he's doing his job or not, you look at the secondary as a whole, these are players that the coaching staff chose. I mean, these uh, uh, collectively. I know there are a lot of things that, that go into play when choosing players, but this, uh, this is the group of players that they chose, that they chose to go with and stick with regardless of poor performance week after week. We haven't seen them bring absolutely any kind of help, even if it's just to look at them. We have so that that's my biggest problem and why it's upsetting and why it, to me at this point it just goes back to coaching and, and again I understand that many different things go into play money contracts all this stuff but at the same time the fact that we have not seen a single thing happen as far as okay even the name that we started to hear okay they're into no no everything that we hear is oh no we we trust our players we th trust that they can do the job. And they haven't. So I, I just, that doesn't make any sense to me. No, I can agree with that. I can agree with the fact that I think that the Cowboys, I mean, we, we talked about Snacks Harrison for a while around here. Like, the fact that they didn't think they needed help at defensive tackle and that maybe he couldn't provide it is kind of baffling to me. So, yeah, I agree with that point. Were you about to say something, Nick? No. Or Dave? Dave, go were ahead, you about Nick. to say something? Well, I mean, oh. I'll just say that. Yeah, uh, well. <laughs> go ahead, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, my only my only point is, I mean, this is, yeah, it's a terrible play by Daryl Worley. It's like the fourth game that we've seen this happen in. And, and Worley has not had a good season, but he's not the only one. I mean, go look at the Lockett touchdown in Seattle. They're running quarters, and the safety and cornerback just don't know to take the guy running the nine route. I mean, and, and you're like, that's, that's terrible cornerback play. But if it keeps happening, again... Like, are these guys really that awful that they can't pick up these concepts over the course of six weeks? Or is it being taught to them in a horrific manner? And I, mean, I don't really know the answer, 
But it sure as hell seems like they don't know what they're doing. And if they don't know what they're doing, I think that's a pretty poor reflection of coaching. Yeah. And you go and you look at the Raiders are playing well. You know, they're beating Patrick Mahomes with that defense. You know, that then that defensive coordinator that we thought, you know, was it was the over. We all thought that, you know. We thought Jeff Heath couldn't play safety or whatever. But um, you know, I just there's there's not options though. I mean, you say Snacks Harrison, okay. Nobody wanted to sign him. Seattle did maybe still in the practice squad. I mean, he could have been better than what they have. I understand that. But like you know, at defensive back, I mean, you know, Jordan Lewis gets hurt, Anthony Brown gets hurt, Cheeto gets hurt. It, it's 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 not it's not a great situation to have guys hurt. You know, I mean, yeah, they added the roster, added players to the roster, but you know, it, these guys are still co- coming back. They didn't do anything all off season. They go to training camp. Guys get hurt early in the season. We've seen it all across the league. It's just that this team, we thought this coaching staff could make up for it. Every coaching staff, every every team has injuries, lots of injuries. Now, maybe not to to, yeah, to this, this level. Different. It's a little it's, different. It's, it's it's big time. Especially on the offensive line. Yeah, this on is offense, different. I mean, this, yeah, I've never this seen is ridiculous like this. on yeah. the on the injuries. But it's just you even you know even in the secondary, they there's they just don't have the options there. We knew going in that the guys weren't that great, and then they get hurt on top of it. So, I, there's no, there's no excuses because we thought this coaching staff with all this experience would be able to kind of fix the problem, and. They haven't at all. And, and another thing I'll say that real quick, and you guys can allude to this too, they're just not prepared. The, they are getting their ass kicked in the first half. That is just embarrassing. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the defense finally played well, but the offense couldn't do anything. They couldn't pee a drop in the first quarter of the game, and they have it all year. That's pre- preparation. Yeah. I mean, maybe Kellen Moore needs to – I mean, we need to figure that out. I mean, he's this genius to, to, to figure out all these plays and stuff like that. They're not prepared. They don't do anything fun. I mean, why don't we do fun stuff? Reverse, fake reverses. I mean, Andy Isabella is running all over the field. I don't even think he touched the ball, but he's all over the field. Do something different. But they don't, and and they're getting they're getting down in every game. Well, but I think part of that has to be blamed on the turnovers as well. I mean, sure. we talked about it last week. There's a big difference between the number of turnovers they had in the first half and the number they had in the second half. Yesterday, those two fumbles by Zeke, Happened in the first half, and those are big, big, big momentum shifts. I think in both instances, either the Cowboys had already crossed midfield or they were right around midfield, and they're giving the ball away. And and that sets yeah. up your defense to give up more points because obviously we know they're not great. You certainly don't want them operating <laughs> with half a field, right? <laughs> And so all that being like, I think I think you got to focus on the, the turnovers. And we're going to take our final break. When we come back, I do want to talk a little bit about that. Coach McCarthy's taking uh, the, the hit for that one. I want to ask you guys, how much does coaching really matter in that instance? And how, does, how can a coach possibly change uh, when it comes to getting guys not to fumble? We'll talk about that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. 
Pepper and cream soda. A delicious duet. Back to the break. Looking for something to change up your dinner routine? Help support local Frisco businesses by choosing one of the Star District restaurants. For information on delivery, takeout, curbside pickup, and dining availability, visit thestardistrict.com. It is the final segment of the break live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're talking about the Cowboys' loss. Uh, to the Arizona Cardinals, 38-10. to Cowboys moved 2-4 and four on the season, uh, but they're still in first place, so I guess there is a silver lining to everything. Uh, stop it, Dave. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the fumbles. Um, Zeke Elliott yesterday, as we kind of alluded to earlier in the show, he had two more fumbles. Uh, they both led to, uh, to points. And right now the Cowboys are negative 12 turnover ratio for the season, and they've allowed 84 points, 84 points through six games off turnovers. Uh, Zeke has five fumbles and has lost four for the season. My question for you guys is what can the coaches do with a player like Zeke who is arguably your best offensive player but seems to have an issue with fumbles that isn't resolving itself? Nick? I mean, I, I, I guess technique in practice. I don't know. I mean, or tell him to run for 100 yards a game because when, when DeMarco Murray did it and he fumbled every single week but he was getting 100 yards a game and went on to set a single season record, it was okay. It seemed like you know you'll take a fumble. We were killing him though, huh? We were killing we were killing him, killing him but show. he was also getting 115 <laughs> yards, and so it's it's not so bad. But the Zeke hasn't got a 100 yard game yet this year. It's got to be something in technique and practice. Hold the ball differently. I don't know about the sleeve stuff. I heard us all that going on. I don't know. He, I think he was wearing that all the last five years of his career. I mean, focus and and technique. I, I guess because I. I I mean, I don't think you're going to bench him. I mean, I said that on Twitter, and I was trying to. People were trying to roast me for that. No, you're not, because you got Tony Pollard, who I don't think can see very well. He doesn't have 20/20 vision, and you want him to go out there and play. So the, the, there's not a lot of options there. You know, hold on to the ball. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. Amber, would you have benched Zeke Elliott? I mean, at that point of the game, where where that did happen, it. It was like okay, I I, did, I had zero hope anymore, so whatever. <laughs> but I I moving forward, moving forward. I mean, like Nick said, who who else is gonna like Zeke is one of your best players, and it's hard to bench a guy like that. And it's not like this is a rookie, you know. He has experience. He knows how to hold on to the ball. He knows how to go against guys super super hard and still hold on to that ball. So. I don't know what exactly the problem is. I'm sure Zeke is trying his best to eliminate that kind of problem. But I, I guess I would agree with Nick with the whole just practice. Figure out a way to practice. Give him, I don't even know what kind of exercises you do. Give him the ball. Have the 20 guys going up against him over and over to see if he can hold on to it. I don't know. But definitely you just, <laughs> you don't have uh, anyone that's really better. So just i guess keep practicing and keep hoping it gets better dave i'm gonna change the question a little bit on you tell me what you think of zeke elliott this year as a runner um he's been i think kind of off and on i think there's some moments he probably wishes he could have gotten back one thing i have noticed is it doesn't seem like he he breaks as many tackles or makes that one guy miss that it made that he may have made miss in the past what how do you assess him overall as a runner this year I mean, the, the brutal reality is, like, making guys miss hasn't been his game for a while. I think I've been impressed when he is able to be a factor in games. I think he's physical. I think he's great at turning, you know, two-yard holes into four- and five-yard gains. Uh, he's been good at carrying guys after contact. Um, he, he, he hasn't been that explosive guy. I think he had, you know, one run over 15 yards, and he fumbled at the end of it. Obviously, you know, it hurts It hurts to see a guy like Derrick Henry, you know, house it from 94 yards out. We haven't mm-hmm. seen that from Zeke in years. But honestly, I'll, I, will take, I will take what we have seen from Zeke if he can hang on to the ball. And the, the brutal, again, the brutal truth of the matter is, like, this is not necessarily a new problem. Um, it hasn't always cropped up like this, but I'm looking at it right now. I think Zeke has fumbled 20 times in his career, and he's lost half of them. 
That ain't, I mean, that ain't good by any measure, let alone if you're supposedly one of the best three backs in the league. I don't know what to do about it. I actually asked Mike McCarthy like two weeks ago. I was like, I feel dumb asking you about how to coach guys to hold on to the ball because they're professional football players. Like they have been learning how to carry a football since they were eight. And now they're in their late 20s. I mean, what else is there to teach them? I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, make them carry it around the facility or like work in it in practice. But is that something that they've never done before? I highly doubt it. So it's very troubling because I don't have a great answer for how to make it better. But it's it's been a bigger problem for Zeke than I think people want to admit. And it's really rearing its head this year. And I mean, you know, you can tell how exasperated he was last night. He just kept saying, I don't know, but I have to figure it out. And I agree with him. I don't know either, but he needs to figure it out or this offense doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, the fact of the matter is in situations like this where the offensive line is as decimated as it is and you don't have your quarterback, this is why you pay yeah. Zeke the big bucks. Is he's got to, Not only does he have to figure out how to hold on the ball, that's the least of his problems. He's got to figure out how to be better than he would be otherwise because this offense needs him to be that in order for them to be successful. And that's the hard part here is that you got to figure out the fumble thing, but even beyond that, I think he's going to have to figure out how to be a better version of himself uh, in order for them to be successful. And I bet you that did uh, play a factor in in the game. Maybe. You know, I, I kind of thought he would go out and kind of will himself and the team. Um, it, it, he probably was trying to do too much, trying to get extra yards. Think about it. You don't have the ball locked in. You caught a pass. Now you're getting upfield, and you know they, they take the ball away. But you know, re- remember this about uh, other running backs. You know, you just want to replace your running back. Okay, that's that's fine. But um, you know, they also block. They also have to pick up protection. They also have to see blitzers. Um, we saw the Cowboys lose their whole season in 2010 because you know the baby Gronk, not not the one playing for the Patriots and the Bucks, but the little brother Gronkowski, he he went the wrong way and Tony Romo's season was over because of blitzing linebacker. So you can't just say bring in Pollard and bring in Rico Dowdle and all that. Yeah, every once in a while they might be able to run the ball, but you know they also. They need to be able to pick up and play different different parts of the game. I will say this. I saw a couple times yesterday when Tony Pollard did a nice job picking up yeah, the blitz. Yeah, I did um, see and that so, too. And so, I, yeah. again, I, I think Tony Pollard plays well for his role. Like that's, But that's the point, for his role. Right. Nobody's expecting him to come in here and be Zeke. And if you're then putting him in the role of being Zeke, I'm not sure what you're going to get out of it. Maybe you get something good, maybe you don't. Everybody but loves you're the already, backup. You're already paying Dak a ton of money. I mean, I'm sorry, not Dak. You're paying, paying Zeke a ton of money. you got to figure out how to get him right because yeah. they, they really need him to play to that level. Um, let's talk a little bit before we end the show about the defense. Yesterday, Amber, you alluded to it. This defense played, I thought, really well in the first quarter. Um, and then the wheels fall off, fell off, and it just got just completely out of hand. How much do you blame of what happened with the defense yesterday? How much do you blame that on the turnovers? And do you think, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I want you to really think about this. Do you think the defense is actually getting better since, based upon the number of weeks that they've played? Are they better now than they were in week one and two? Let's start first with you, Amber. Um, can I ask Dave a question real quick? I don't know if you have the answer to this, Dave, but when you said about Zeke and the amount of time that he has uh, fumbled the ball in previous years, out of those, do you know how many times opposing teams were able to score? I do not. I'm sorry. I didn't run those numbers. But I can later. <laughs> well, I, I, it just it, it made me – it's just out of curiosity and just wondering. I mean, we know how about how bad the defense has been, and it just makes me wonder if previous turnovers in previous years were not as bad because the defense in previous years were able to actually play better and make certain stops to where the opposing team is not – scoring every single time so um to answer your question Derek I you know again I need to watch the game I don't know if it was really the defense playing better at the beginning of the game or if it was just the Cardinals offense not playing as well I remember watching the game going back I, I remember that I was seeing both offenses the Cowboys and the Cardinals and I'm like man this is really bad they're both playing terrible what's going on so 
I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I keep asking people around, I, what is the problem overall? How do you get better? How do you fix what's going on with defense? And no one seems to have a, a good answer. There, there's not. And it's just really, really hard to figure out a way to get better. And, and I don't see them improving week by week. And yes, there was that little bit of at the beginning of this game, but that, that just wasn't enough. So it, it's hard to imagine that this defense... It's going to get any better uh, as the weeks go by. Leighton Van Der Esch was in. He, I thought he did a nice job, you know, based on what he could possibly do. At least he had energy. The defense is not playing with the kind of energy level that I want them to be at. So that's a huge problem to me. And Randy Gregory coming in, I know we have uh, good hopes and expectations there. But, it, uh, again, these guys that are coming back into the game healthy, uh, I just don't know if that's really going to be enough to actually make a, a drastic change at their performance in the in a game day. So, Dave, any modicum of 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 improvement from this defense? No, no, no. You don't get to <laughs> like no. You don't. You, you no. I'm so serious. You don't get to even be complimented if you give up uncontested touchdowns from 80 and 70 yards away in the same game. Like, Fair. the skill, the talent of NFL players and the skill of the scheme means to score from 60 yards away or further, you should be doing something badass. Like, just hitting all the right blocks. You know, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry has to stiff arm four guys and juke three more to go 94 yards. The Cardinals just ran in a straight line. That's all they did. <laughs> And that's pathetic. That is what should happen in Clemson, Georgia Tech. Travis Etienne is so much better than the 11 guys on Georgia Tech that he can do that. This is the NFL. So, no, you don't get credit for having that happen twice in a game. Uh, I think it's I, – I, I think this is all weirdly tied together. And I kind of feel like this whole team is in its own head, whereas the defense comes out and plays four good series – and now they're thinking, oh no, like we've we've been playing well and we we've don't have a lead. Everything we have. This isn't gonna go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> right. They're like, we're at the end of our rope and we don't have a lead. <laughs> Meanwhile, now the offense is saying, Oh no, we turned the ball over and put them in a bad situation. Now we've got to press to do even more. So the defense maybe doesn't trust itself to play clean long enough to get a lead, and the offense doesn't trust the defense to overcome their mistakes, and now everybody's got the yips. Like, that's honestly my opinion, because the defense looked pretty solid for three or four possessions, and as soon as the offense put them in a hole, they give up an 80-yard touchdown. And then as soon as the offense realized that things are snowballing against them, you see Zeke fighting the ball, you see another fumble, you see Dalton making bad reads, and now everything's a mess. I just... I don't know if these two units have confidence in each other to do their jobs correctly, and and it plays out in what you see. Nick, can you give me any silver lining on this defense, even a little bit? Um, Randy Gregory is coming back, <laughs> and Cheeto's coming back, and they're better than the average, below average guys that are that are mm -hmm. over there. I mean, Randy Gregory will be better than Dorrance Armstrong, I think. And then I think Cheeto will be better than Daryl. Can he Worley. stop the run? Is the question. I don't. I don't. I, I mean, don't this think team so. stopping Here, the run one, is a problem. Th fourth and one, big play in the game. Dontari Poe's on the sideline. Justin Hamilton, who was on the practice squad in the morning, yeah, and then got signed later that day, is is out there on the field. So I, I and and I, to be honest with you, I have no problem with that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I know they can't move players around or whatever. I, I think the big thing is that they, if, if it's a kickoff and the defense is huddling up and they go out on the field, I think they play okay. But if they're sitting there looking at the board, talking about stuff, and all of a sudden, like, oh, sudden change. Get your helmet. Oh, you're out on the field because we fumbled again. That's when they really suck because they can't – they they do not stop. You, you don't have to score just because the team gets a turnover doesn't mean, well, we better give up a score. They, they Their sudden change defense is atrocious. They don't just run out on the field and go, oh, man, we got to get this thing stopped. They don't. And even hold a field goal. No, like That's kind of goes to Amber's it. point. Like in the past, that's one thing you did. Nothing. I think we did see, and I don't know the numbers, but I think we saw – from past defenses is even when they weren't the greatest defenses, they could still at least hold to a field goal in some of those instances. This year, it seems like the Cowboys, when they give that up, it's going to be seven, and yep. there's not really much you can do to stop it. All right, we appreciate you guys joining us. We're back tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and start getting ready for the Washington football team. Cowboys will travel to Washington this Sunday 
and uh, play for a noon kickoff. We'll have Bucky join us tomorrow and on Thursday to talk about that Washington uh, offense first and then the defense on Thursday. Well, until then, for Nick Eatman, Dave Hellman, Amber Garcia, I am Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com. Radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!